In this video, we will implement in less than 10 minutes such module inside Angular as pagination. And this is how it will look like. As you can see, it doesn't make any sense to spend time on trying to find the perfect library if you can implement this code in less than 10 minutes. So here I already generated for us an Angular application. As you can see, I don't have anything inside, just an empty app component HTML and app component TS. So first of all, we must talk about our pagination component and how we want to structure it. And actually for this component, I will create a separate module, because essentially this is a separate feature. And inside this module, I will pack our component. And then later, for example, inside our app component, we will use it. So how we're intending to use it? So here we will import our module pagination and then use it like this. We have our pagination component and first of all we must provide here a current page. Why current page? Because actually we want to store the page that must be highlighted outside. Our pagination component is completely dumb, which actually means we can open our app component TS and create here a variable which will be current page and this is a number and by default we can set it to 1. After this we must provide inside a limit and total amount. So here we can just say limit equals 20 for example. So we assume that we are showing 20 elements on the page and then we need total here. And this is the total amount of elements that we have inside our API. Not how many elements we got because we got 20 per page, but the total. And here you will typically have some big number, for example, 500. And after this, we need an event when our pagination will say for us that we changed the page. So we're clicking, for example, from first page on the fifth page and then this event happens and we can name it for example change page and we're getting from our pagination component a page number this is why here we must create a change page function let's do this now inside our app component TS I want to create change page and here we're getting our new page so here page is number and we just need to change our current page so it will be void and here we simply want to reassign our current page to the page that we got so this is exactly what information we will typically get from our backend when we are fetching some elements. For example, you are fetching your 20 posts on the page and additionally to this array of posts, you are getting your total amount because you need it for pagination. This is exactly why inside pagination we are providing limit and total because only in this case we can calculate how many pages we must render inside our pagination. And now let's start with implementing our pagination. So here I want to create a new folder and let's name it pagination. This is our feature. And inside we must create our pagination module TS because as I said, we want to fully isolate this feature inside this module. This is why here let's register our ng module and let's export our new class, which will be pagination module. Now inside our module, we can inside the imports provide common module. So we have access to things like, for example, ng or ng4 if we need it later. And now let's add our component. And for this, I want to create a folder components and create a new component pagination inside. And you can say now, okay, this is our kill. We just have a single component. This is totally fine, but I want to create scalable architecture, which actually means if for some reason later, we have here five more components, we can directly pack them inside this folder. This is why I created for our component additional folder pagination. And now let's create our files. We have here our pagination component.html then pagination component.ts and also pagination component.css. Now let's render something inside our pagination HTML just so we check that it is working. Now let's jump inside our TS file and here we want to register our new component and as we saw earlier, we must name our selector pagination. Also, we must provide here a template URL that we just created. This is pagination component HTML and also our style URLs. This is the array with just one file, pagination component CSS. And here is our class. Let's export here our pagination component. 
So we successfully created our component, now we must register it inside our pagination module. This is why here, first of all, we must provide our declarations, and here we will have our pagination component, but also we must export it, because we want to use this pagination component outside, and it is not isolated. This is why we are providing here our pagination component. And our last step will be to register this pagination module inside our app module TS. This is why here inside our imports we can just add our pagination module that we just created. As you can see now inside console we are getting errors like cannot bind to limit, total and so on. This is totally fine because inside our app component HTML we are trying to provide all this stuff inside our pagination component but we didn't implement any inputs or outputs yet. Let's do this now. This is why I want to jump back inside our pagination components pagination, pagination component yes, and let's define what we are getting from outside. So here we will have our input, and we know that we are getting here current page, and it will be a number. But if we will leave it like this, we will get an error, property current page has no initializer, and it is not assigned. We can for sure write here undefined, but it is not comfortable, this is why I want just to put here a default value, and it will be 1, which actually means if we are not providing current page from the outside, then we set it to 1 inside. We also need our another input, and we will use it for the total. And actually this is the number, and I want to set it to 0. Why to 0? Because I want to avoid undefined, and if we have total and we didn't provide it from outside, then we won't have any pages and we won't render anything. This is why it is totally safe. And the last thing will be here our limit. And here I also want to say that this is a number, and by default let's say it is 20. And the last thing here will be our output, so let's register here our output function, and it will be a function change page, and we simply assign here a new event emitter, but we must have here a correct import, we must import it from Angular Core. And here we can say that we are getting back a number, because we are throwing outside our number of the page, and just round brackets. So this is our correct inputs and outputs, let's check if it's working. As you can see here inside terminal we don't have any errors, and now inside browser we are rendering pagination. This is just a single word, but it means a lot, because it means that we successfully created our module component and provided correctly all inputs and outputs. Now we must write some logic, because essentially what we want to create is a local property pages. What is pages? These are just numbers inside our pagination component. And what we want to do inside our pagination HTML is simply loop through these pages and render numbers, for example, from 1 to 20, if we have 20 pages. This is why let's create here a new property, which is called pages, and this is an array of numbers, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and so on. And by default it will be an empty array. Now here I also want to create a ngOnInit function, this is why let's write here implements on init, and let's create a ngOnInit. What we want to do inside, we want to create pages property, but before we must know how many pages do we have. This is why here let's calculate it. This will be our pages count, and we can for sure calculate it by dividing our this total, this is the total number of our elements, on this limit. This is our number per page. But also here I want to write math.sale to make this value bigger. Because if we have 500 for example and we are dividing it on 20, we have a normal integer. But if you have for example 501, then you want a bigger number because you have one more page. Let's console log here pages count and check if it's working. And as you can see here in browser we are getting 25, which means it is working correctly. And now it is time to generate an array of pages, and actually we can use a plain JavaScript for this. What I want to do here, I want to write array, and here we want to say how many pages we have. For example, we are providing here 25, and we are getting an empty array with 25 empty elements. And now here we can create an array and spread all these elements, and we are getting here an array of undefined. But if we will write here dot keys, then we are getting a nice array from 0 to 24. This is exactly what we need. 
but actually here we want to have our values from 1 to pages count. But what we are creating here is a reusable function which is called range. And here we simply want to know the range from one number to another. This is why here we can just map and get our elements and write here element plus start. In our case start will be 1. And then we are getting a nice array from 1 to 25. We can do it differently and provide here for example a start 10 and then we will have our array from 10 to 34. Which actually means it is fully reusable. Now I can copy paste this code and create a new function and let's name it range. And here we first of all have our start, this is a number, and we have our end, and it is also a number. And back we are getting our array of pages, which means number array. And now inside I want to simply return this code. And here we have our array of end keys, and here instead of one we are using our start. And now inside our ngOnInit we can use this range function and get our these pages. This is why let's assign inside this dot pages our this range function, which we are doing from 1 to our page count that we already have. Let's console log our pages and check if it's working. So here is these pages and let's look in browser. As you can see here we are getting a nice array from 1 to 25 and this is exactly what we want to render. Now let's write a correct markup for our pagination. And for this we must open our pagination component HTML and write here a markup. And actually I already prepared our CSS and we will just paste it inside our component so we won't spend time on writing CSS. So here first of all we have UL with class pagination and let's close our UL. And now we want to render a list of our lists. This is why here we have our li, let's close it. And inside we have an ng for loop and we are looping here through our pages. Now here inside our li we will have a span with class page-link. Let's close the span and we can render our page just like number inside. After this we also must set some styles for our li. And here for this I want to use ng class because we want to write some logic. This is why here I have an object and first of all I want to apply here a class page item and it will be always true. But also after this I want logic, I want to highlight our active page. This is why here I want to set active class when we are comparing our current page with page and it is true. In this case we will correctly highlight our li. And last thing that we need here is click event with the meeting our value. So here we can simply say when we are clicking on our li, we want to call change page output by calling a meet with our page that we're providing inside. And this is actually all markup of our component. Let's check if it's working. I will jump to the browser and as you can see we have a nice list of all our pages. But obviously we don't have any styles. This is why I want to open our pagination component CSS and paste all styles. And here we have lots of styles for pagination, page item and page link. And obviously you don't want to retype all these styles from the screen, so you can take them from the source code in the description box below. Let's check now if our styles are there. I will reload the page and now it looks differently. So here we rendered our pagination from 1 to 25 and our current page is highlighted because we compared our page with current page and it was active. Additionally we can select some other page and this will be outputted to the parent and then inside parent we are changing our current page. And you might say now, ok, but this is a super basic pagination, we are rendering all our pages here, we don't have previous, next, first page, last page. You are totally right, but such pagination can be enough for a lot of websites. And actually if you are interested to learn what is in GRX or how it is working inside Angular, make sure to check this video also.